So, uh, hello and thank you for the kind invitation. As was already mentioned, I, um, I wasn't the originally invited speaker. I, I bring uh, apologies from Dr. Heiner Kass. Uh, at the last minute, he was called away on um, uh, an unexpected business meeting. So, uh, first of all, a few uh, words on the company. We're a spin-off from uh, Mainz University, located approximately 20 minutes from Frankfurt Airport. We're one of the fastest growing uh, biotech companies in Europe, which, which can be um, uh, seen in the number of employees we have now, well over 400, I being one of these, uh, for, <laughs> more than 400. Uh, our IP interests are mainly in the fields of uh, tumor and immunotherapeutic uh, therapies. Um, what is BioNTech? BioNTech is a holding of several different independent, uh, independently acting subsidiaries. Uh, all are acting within the fields of cancer and immune theranostics, gene and, gene and uh, cell therapy, uh, RNA-based therapies. Uh, this also includes a manufacturing site approximately 100 uh, kilometers away from our main site in Mainz. Uh, in which we produce all liposomes, lipoplexes, and RNA products used for our ongoing clinical trials. This uh, RNA-based uh, therapy is what I'd like to speak to you today. Uh, so uh, here's quite a simplified uh, introduction to the scope of the company. Uh, RNA nanomedicines can be used for several different uh, applications being um, potentially uh, universal in, uh, in theory. Uh, for us, the first line of therapy is uh, tumor immunotherapy. Uh, this technology can also be used for uh, vaccination purposes as, as well as expression of therapeutic proteins. Many different challenges uh, uh, must be met and overcome with the, uh, the journey from bench to bedside, uh, but uh, we're well on the way to the bedside. Uh, I would like to talk in this case, for the sake of time, only about the formulation uh, aspect shown here on the top, which is uh, the area in which I work. Uh, tumor, tumor cells can be recognized um, by the immune system, and, system, and this, this is done very well um, by uh, uh, antigen uh, expressing cells, which can then be uh, marked for uh, destruction by killer T cells. And the idea of BioNTech is to harness this uh, inherent uh, defense mechanism of the body. So uh, instead of doing, uh, doing uh, cancer therapies by, via conventional vaccination using antigens, we instead use uh, messenger RNA, which codes for the antigen uh, which we want to use for the therapeutics. And for that, we much, must bring uh, this tumor coding uh, antigen RNA uh, to the uh, immune cells or the dendritic cells. Uh, if this uh, delivery process is uh, successful, we can induce a whole cascade of immune responses, including both systematic responses, such as uh, uh, heightened expression of interferon alpha, as well as specific immunoresponses, uh, such as expansions of T cells, which can specifically target uh, cells which present uh, this antigen of interest. One of the key technological, technological challenges of this is to bring the RNA to, to the cell, the, uh, the drug delivery aspect. And for this, uh, to date, we use uh, lipid nanoparticles, which uh, allows the direct intraven intravenous um, administration of this medicinal product. Oui, too far. So um, this uh, lipoplex nanoparticle, how do we make this? We, we combine um, our therapeutic RNA with uh, a lipid carrier uh, under um, varying uh, conditions um, to produce a nanoparticle with the specifications uh, which are desired. This can then be mixed with a diluent in a formulation and administered in intravenously, at which point um, uh, targeting of the, the specified uh, cell or organ uh, can be achieved. Um, the formulation research process is physical chemical, uh, more like a physical chemical screening uh, with intermittent, intermittent uh, biological evaluation of the formulations. Um, uh, so currently this, uh, this development process is done manually to keep the steps as uh, simplistic as possible. So just a few, um, uh, an overview of the, um, the products uh, developed by BioNTech. Um, the vaccines in clinical uh, development currently are, include uh, FixVac, where a generic mixture of 
um, antigen coding uh, mRNA is uh, administered to the patient, um, uh, which forms the therapy. Uh, and increased complexity can be seen in the EVAC warehouse, whereby um, certain antigens are matched to the patient's um, uh, tumor profile. And finally, the most complex of these are the, uh, is the EVAC mutinome, whereby the therapy is completely personalized to uh, the patient's uh, mutinome, providing a completely personalized uh, nanomedicine therapy. So, as I said already, what's currently being used is the kit approach. This is done to keep the product as flexible and uh, fast from, um, uh, concept from the formulation to the patient as possible. This is also done to satisfy the various regulatory requirements of the various um, medical authorities within Germany and the world. Um, currently, we have, uh, we've separated the RNA drug product, uh, the dilutant and the liposomes. This is then mixed by the physician and administered, as I said, uh, intravenously. How this is made, the, the upscaling process to date, it, it's done uh, under GMP conditions uh, naturally, and uh, the, uh, the upscaling is essentially an enlargement of the uh, reaction pot. Um, with additional um, quality control uh, steps to regulate uh, particle size and uh, efficacy, shown here in the middle left, uh, which is the multi-step extrusion process which is used to uh, remove outliers. To the right can be seen our GMP, process, our GMP uh, manufacturing facility, um, and here can be seen the, uh, a through flow of the liposome manufacturing process. Uh, as you can see, it's completely aseptic, and it produces a very active and stable formulation, which can be used um, on an ongoing basis uh, for clinical trials and also a research. Um, so here you can see just some initial um, images from when the, the research group initially got interested in uh, microfluidics as the answer to um, up upscaling of processes. Um, it's now uh, almost a decade since this research line has been opened by the group. Um, and indeed, the, the research interests are not only limited to lipid nanoparticles, also to liposomes, uh, lipoplex, the, the, the ready-to-use lipoplex product, and also polyplexes, which is uh, a newer and uh, ongoing research line uh, within the group. So just uh, a few of the geometries which we use. Um, of course, uh, we have our nano, nano assembler device shown here <coughs> in the top with the, the conventional uh, herringbone serpentine mixing architecture. Also, we have uh, YT and Q flow mixers, serpentine, herringbone, as I've said, uh, split and recombine. And um, the one uh, catching our interest uh, most to date is the uh, hydrodynamic focusing, which is showing some very interesting results. Some. Uh, Visualization processes that we use, um, basic uh, digital, um, a digital, digital uh, optical microscope is used just to confirm um, uh, mixing, very basic mixing um, behaviors, and, uh, and also the, the focusing effect, which can be seen in the, in the, to, the, to the top right of the screen. Uh, an additional uh, research line that, I, that uh, I, I would like to start is the use of CFD to predict um, mixing behaviors. At the moment, I'm, I've finished compiling uh, the, uh, the first um, attempt at this using the open source open foam package. Hopefully, at the next symposium, I'll be able to present some, uh, some success stories with that. Um, moving swiftly on to um, the uh, results to present to you. Um, here, you can see um, a successful attempt at the synthesis of our liposomes, um, there was no uh, apparent correlatable uh, relationship between flow, flow rate, uh, flux, and particle size, uh, with part of, uh, microfluidic synthesized particles being consistently smaller than our um, uh, manually manufactured benchmark, though um, uh, polydispersity was completely correlatable. Uh, further, uh, further options for particle engineering are being tested on an ongoing basis, but uh, these results are very much encouraging us to um, continue this research line. Uh, again, uh, for uh, process development, um, the nano sampler is highly useful for uh, 
high throughput rapid uh, production of uh, prototype uh, molecules. Uh, for this, we combine, as I've said, uh, our RNA product and liposome under various conditions, which is mixed, and um, the RNA uh, lipoplex is then um, extracted and then stored either in liquid or solid state, uh, and also lyophilized, which can then be reconstituted at a later date. Uh, moving on now to uh, the, a study on lipoplex formation using the nanoassembler. Um, quite favorable results came out from this, uh, including um, uh, no dependency on, uh, on flux, on particle size, and thus uh, a, a rapid synthesis uh, flow rate can be used. Um, no apparent correlation between uh, bioactivity was also seen with this, uh, and at most uh, a slight increase in uh, luminescence can be seen at the uh, higher flux rates. Uh, regarding RNA concentration, a particle size increase was seen, which uh, was accompanied by uh, a slight um, increase in bioactivity, which is uh, intuitive. Um, Finally, uh, salt concentration also saw an increase in particle size as well as um, quite a marked increase in um, bioactivity uh, relative to the other salt concentrations used, um, though this was a decrease from the benchmark. Um, uh, comparable uh, results were seen in vivo for, with respect to bioactivity um, between the microfluidic synthesized lipoplexes and the clinic formulation, the benchmark. Um, however, uh, when high throughput volumes were attempted, we did see um, a clogging effect in the architecture, uh, which required um, an, uh, a sporadic uh, flushing of the system to remove this, uh, at which point the system could then be used um, without a problem. Uh, for this reason, uh, we'd love to, to hear if there's any, any changes of architectures planned. We'd, we'd love to, to work with you on that. Um, moving on to uh, a more recent uh, research line on the subject of polyplexes. For the sake of um, defining them, uh, one, can, one can describe them as analogous to uh, lipoplexes in the sense that uh, a cationic polymer is complexed with RNA mixed uh, to produce a, a delivery vector for the uh, RNA therapeutic. When tested against uh, an established uh, Q-mixer, um, very comparable uh, results were achieved with uh, physical chemical characteristics being dependent on flow rate, flow rate ratio, and uh, final RNA concentration, thus uh, greatly encouraging us to, to continue uh, on, this, uh, the on this subject uh, using microfluidics. Uh, what remains now is only to um, draw some conclusions from this, which is that uh, microfluidics is applicable to uh, many purposes within manufacturing of uh, nanoparticulate pharmaceutical products. The technical setup and, and mixer geometry cannot be underestimated with respect to the requirements of the product to be manufactured. Um, uh, issues such as clogging, as we've seen, um, uh, may, be, may be overcome with a modification of internal geometry. This is a continuing uh, research line which is uh, underway. And uh, straightforward, so straightforward upscaling towards GMP manufacturing uh, can be realized in the foreseeable future. Uh, with that, um, I would like to acknowledge and thank my colleagues and friends at uh, BioNTech. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you for your awesome talk. Um, question regarding the polyplexes you guys are starting to embark on. Can you comment on what you're looking for that would be different, say, the lip, than the lip, lipoplexes that you're working on now? Um, well, uh, f for one, it, it's a, a different uh, delivery pathway, mm -hmm. so, so this would be one thing. The, the jury is still out with, regard, with respect to uh, toxicity, but it's um, very much an open, um, an open research line showing a lot of promise. Uh, 
Uh, thanks for a nice presentation. I was just wondering, um, why do you choose intravenous or systemic administration of your lipid nanoparticles if you want to engage the immune system? Ah, well, th this is um, for practical purposes. In, in um, a previously uh, completed uh, clinical trial, they were uh, the RNA, the naked RNA, was injected directly into the, uh, the lymph nodes, but this required um, uh, doctors to do this. Uh, with the intravenous method, um, nurses and phlebotomists can do this procedure, which greatly um, reduces the technical uh, challenges related to this administration. And, and there's no um, uh, immune stimulation as a result of the or hypersensitivity reactions due to the formulation that you inject intravenously, because that is at least what we observe in the clinic for our liposomal formulations, one of the most common side effects, which might be one of the offsides of this. Um, uh, indeed, I, I would refer you to uh, our Nature article published uh, in June of this year. Um, but um, uh, the uh, active targeting, the active uh, stimulation of the immune system is, is uh, somewhat favorable in this, in this case, with, uh, with the product being passive uh, delivery with active uptake. Thus, uh, the, the phagocytes recognize this, as, uh, this product as a uh, xenobiotic and thus ingest it and accumulate in the organ of choice. So it, it can be a good thing at times. Yeah, go ahead. Just a really short one, um, just because you uh, had a small slide on it. Uh, the choice of using polymers to, to create polyplexes, is there, uh, what is your actual rationale behind it? Um, the choice of the polymer? Yeah. You have worked a lot on uh, lipoplexes so far. Uh, is there a specific rationale to move towards polyplexes or explore also polyplexes? That's a very good question. Um, well, yes, uh, at, at the moment we're using um, uh, an on-the-market uh, polymer uh, JET uh, PI, um, which uh, allows for rapid prototyping. Um, with, re with respect to the specific choice, um, uh, I, I, would, uh, I don't think I'd be able to comment on that. <laughs> 